is rental car number 128 and today I'm driving the 2019 Ford Edge Titanium. Now there is an all-wheel drive version of this SUV but this is not it. This is the EcoBoost model. It's got front-wheel drive if you're curious and it also has the 301A equipment group package which includes things like a voice activated touchscreen with navigation, heated and ventilated leather seats, a panoramic Vista sunroof that I absolutely love, and Ford's new Copilot 360, 360 <laughs> assist technology. That just means that when you throw this thing into cruise, it'll match the speed of the vehicle in front of you and even steer through gentle curves for you. It's uh, pretty fun to play around with. Anyway, this is a four-door mid-size crossover SUV that seats five. This one's in the stone gray color, which I kind of like, and it's also got 19-inch nickel-plated aluminum wheels. All that together means you're going to pay around $41,000 for this vehicle. I also think it's worth mentioning that uh, this is actually the second generation of the Edge. They've been making this thing since 2006. I say that because I think it's important to know that this is not Ford's first attempt at this particular car. It's been around for a while, so it's a little bit more trustworthy. Under the hood, we have a twin scroll, two liter, four cylinder EcoBoost engine with an eight speed automatic transmission. This thing kicks out 250 horsepower at 5,500 RPMs. And you get some pretty good gas mileage. 22 miles in the city, 29 on the highway with a combined rating around 25 miles per gallon. You get a decent sized fuel tank too. You can fill this thing up with 18 gallons of fuel. Now right now, fuel by me, gas I should say, is around $3.15 a gallon. So that means you can fill this thing up right now for around $56. But enough with the numbers and the specs, let's talk about what it's actually like to drive this car in the real world. And I want to talk about handling first because this car is really comfortable. You don't feel a lot of the bumps in the road. It seems to absorb them really well. I also felt like I was in control when I was going around large curves at high speeds. I didn't feel like it was going to slip at all on me. And actually it was really nice at slow speeds too. The handling is just, well it's really nice. In fact I felt like parking this thing was a breeze. You know, I drive a lot of rental cars, so sometimes when I gotta do some reversing or some difficult parking, I'm a little bit hesitant, but for whatever reason, when I was driving the Edge, I just felt like nothing at all. Acceleration is also really nice. It's smooth and, and a bit quiet. And the quiet part is actually a criticism on my part. I kinda like it when an engine growls really hard when I'm accelerating, and the Edge, it's maybe a little too quiet for my taste, but it is peppy. In fact, I found it really easy to accelerate and pass vehicles on the interstate. Uh, there is an ever so slight delay when you chomp down on that accelerator, but once it kicks in, the edge is really, really fast. Cabin noise is also phenomenal. I did not have to bump up the volume at all on my music, my podcasts, my audiobooks, all the stuff I listen to when I'm in the car for hours and hours and hours. Anyway, I didn't have to mess around with the volume at all, even at high speeds, which at least in my opinion is a great thing because that means the cabin noise is not really affecting the experience of you driving this vehicle at all. So cabin noise, big, big thumbs up. So here's the key fob, Ford's logo on the back and a number of buttons on the front. Unlock, lock button in the center, double tap here for remote start, double tap here to release the hatch, and then you have a panic button right down here. There's also a uh, actual physical key hidden inside. You just got to pinch right here and pull the key fob apart to reveal the key. Now because you have a key fob, there is a push button start right here on the dash. Just push the button to start the car up. So here's the steering wheel setup and you have a ton of buttons on this thing. So let me go over it pretty quickly. You have directional keypads right here and here, and those adjust the settings on the digital screen in the gauge cluster up there. You also have your cruise controls right here. So pretty standard stuff, on and off, cancel, set the speed and reduce the speed. But you also have two additional controls right here. So this button right here is your adaptive cruise control setting. So this vehicle, when it's in cruise, will match the speed of the car in front of it. And you can adjust the distance that the car is going to keep from the vehicle in front of it by pushing this button right here. It also has lane detection uh, assistance on this car. So if you push this button while you're in cruise, the vehicle will sense the lanes in the road, keep you in the center of the lane, and even steer you through gentle curves. It's actually pretty amazing to uh, experience. On the right-hand side, we have buttons to uh, answer and hang up phone calls along with jumping 
uh, in between tracks or chapters in the entertainment features up here on the dash, a volume control right here, and then you can mute the audio or activate the voice assistant. Then up top, we have uh, a really nice gauge cluster. So in the center, we have our speedometer, along with uh, settings down on the bottom to show you what gear we're in. Let me shift through the gears real quick so you can see it. Switch from to reverse, neutral, drive, and sport mode. Let me put it back in park so I don't drive away. You also have screens on the left and right side. These are pretty customizable, so you can cycle through a bunch of screens, and I'm gonna do that just by pressing this control right here. So you'll see I'm on the fuel economy screen right now. You can see things about the vehicle like the auto start, uh, auto start stop feature, which I'll show you in a second, your average speed, and your fuel economy. And then each of these screens you can also adjust further by pressing left or right to adjust a, few, a, a couple of different things. So I'm gonna jump to the trip counter, for example, or see the driver assistant uh, information. but I'll keep it on the fuel economy screen for now. And you also notice down below, there's also the odometer. And despite this car being relatively new, it's already been driven 11,000 miles. Same thing on the right-hand side, they're just different screens that you have access to. To adjust that one, you're gonna press the directional keypad on the right side of the steering wheel. Right now, we got it on the audio screen, so it shows what I'm playing over the Bluetooth connection. But you can also adjust things like jumping to the AM or FM radio, Sirius, or this is the name of my cell phone. Uh, and see a navigation screen, see a compass, and then also see uh, what's coming in on your cell phone. And then on the bottom of this screen, you'll notice that it's 47 degrees outside. We're pointed in the northeasterly direction. And uh, you also got a clock, which I don't know why it's on the 24 hour setting, but uh, that's what 1309 means. To the right of the steering wheel, we have a large cutout uh, that's kind of in the form of a handle. You also have your window controls and your mirror controls right here. Up top, we have a dial to adjust the headlights. I'm on the automatic setting right now. You can also turn on and off fog lights right here. And then there's a keys right here to adjust the brightness of the display in the gauge cluster. And then a button to open the hatch and turn on and off traction control. Back up on the door, we have our door latch. Buttons to uh, lock and unlock the vehicle along with memory seat buttons. Now, I thought this was actually an additional button, but it's just kind of a, a design choice to show us so that we have some premium sound. When you do lock the vehicle using these buttons right here, you do get kind of a red LED light that illuminates right here when the door is locked. Now, the sun is shining pretty bright, but let's see if I can show you. So you see how the red LED is activated just to show you that the door is locked. Also on this side of the vehicle, we have our side view mirrors. You do get blind side detection. Let me open up the window so I can show you that real quick. There's a little icon right here for the blind side indicator and a small light right here that'll flash in yellow if someone is in your blind spot. And you also have that same control, let me close the window, on your uh, passenger side, side view mirror. Up top, we have a sunglass holder. There's also two lights and a bunch of other buttons up here because we have a moonroof on this thing. So let me just really quickly go through the buttons. This will turn on the left light. This button right here will turn on the right light. You also have a button in the middle to turn both lights on at the same time. And then a control to adjust whether or not the lights are going to activate when you open a door. And then you have buttons right here to open and close the shade on the moonroof. And then additional buttons right here to open and close the actual moonroof itself. Side view mirror is void of any buttons at all. There's nothing on here because your garage door opener buttons are up here on the sunshade. Sunshade also has a mirror with an automatic light, which is, uh, well, it's always nice if you want to look pretty. Down below there, we have a cutout right here. It's a small storage space, but let me grab my cell phone just to give you an idea of depth. It's kind of shallow, but it's big enough for a phone or maybe a tool pass, which is always a good thing. I, and I take my phone out of there so I don't forget it later. I'm always freaked out that I'm gonna forget something important in one of my cars. Below there, we have our center display. This is a nice size and, uh, well, I'm a big fan of Ford's setup. Let me go to the home screen real quick so you can kind of get a sense uh, for how this thing operates. You'll notice that we have navigation. My phone is connected via Bluetooth and I'm listening to an audiobook. And it shows you that I have full signal strength on my cell phone, about half battery life, and uh, that we also have 911 assist activated. 
I like this setup because it has dedicated buttons on the touchscreen below so you can quickly jump to all the important menu structures. So jump to the audio screen and see what's playing either uh, over your cell phone or over the radio. Climate screen is really easy. You can adjust the temperature just by pushing these buttons, adjust where the vents are blowing just by hitting here, and then also adjust the fan and the temperature on the passenger side of the vehicle, turn on and off the AC controls. My point being here, this is really easy to use. You also have a, uh, a phone menu where you can uh, look at your contact history or mute your cell phone by doing do not disturb, check your text messages, that kind of thing. Navigation is also nice because uh, you get a nice big screen right here, but it also comes up on this screen as well. So you can see your compass down here and your map over here. Let's jump back to the home screen. Got a couple of apps uh, loaded on this, but uh, it's a rental car, so not everything is just perfect quite yet. And then you have a setting screen. This worked great. Let's change the clock, for example. I do not like the 24-hour setting, so I'll change it back. Now you see it's 1.15 in the afternoon. So anyway, I really like this. It's easy to see. It's got a lot of nice functionality. And I like that you can see, just on any screen, what temperature you've set the vehicle at. So 72 for the driver, 65 for the passenger. Get a clock right in the middle, and it also shows you what temperature it is outside. And then because my phone is connected via Bluetooth, it also shows that I have full signal strength over my cell. Down below there we have a small button to turn on your hazard lights and then a button right here to activate the front facing camera. So if you push this button you get a view for what's directly in front of the vehicle. If you press it again you get kind of a wider view uh, and you can see a little bit further down in front of the vehicle which is always nice to make sure you're not running over or anything. You also have buttons to activate the climate controls and then also you have cooled and heated seats. So you've probably seen heated seats before. These work great, they heat up really nicely, but this also has ventilated seats, so it kind of blows a little bit of cool air in your lower back, which on a hot day is actually pretty, pretty amazing. Uh, controls right here to adjust the temperature and the intensity of the fan, and whenever you activate one of these controls, you do get pop-up windows depending on what screen you're on. So see, I'm adjusting temperature, and now I'm adjusting the intensity of the fan. And then I didn't mention this, but you get nice, a nice big dial in the center to adjust the volume on the entertainment features. Down below there, we have a storage cutout. You have two USB ports here on the right-hand side. Down here, this is actually a charging pad. So if you got a fancier cell phone than I do, you can actually lay your phone down right here and it'll automatically charge for you. It's also a pretty big cutout down here, which is nice, so you should be able to get other items down here in addition to your cell phone if you need the space. Behind there we have the gear shift. It's in the form of a dial, so you just got to push down on the brake pedal, and then you can cycle through park, reverse, neutral, drive, and then press the button in the center to activate sport mode. When you are in reverse, you do get a backup camera that pops up. Gives you a pretty wide view, and the screen resolution is really nice. I'm parked in a mall right now, and you can make out the front door of the mall pretty clearly, which is not always true. Some of these rear-view cameras are pretty grainy, but this one is really nice. So let's put it back in park so I don't drive away. Behind there, you got the electronic parking brake. Just pull it up to activate the brake and push it down to deactivate the brake. Next to that, you got two cutouts to uh, hold drinks, and then another cutout right here, which is pretty much perfect to keep a cell phone. Behind there, we have the automatic start-stop feature right here. So what this will do is when you bring the car to a stop, uh, the vehicle's gonna automatically turn off just to save you a little bit of fuel consumption. And then you have your parking aids right here. So let me press this button right here, and it'll bring up the parallel park out feature. So the car will actually park and unpark itself using these features. And you could turn on and off the system by hitting this button right here. Behind there, we have another cutout right here. Pretty perfect for a cell phone. And then behind there, we have our center armrest. Has some pretty nice leather on top of it. And it opens up in two ways. So there's actually two controls right here, one on the left, one on the right. So I'm gonna push the one on the right. It opens up and it reveals a small shelf right here that's wrapped in a kind of a felt-like material. And it also reveals the change holder down here. Let me close it 
and push the left button on this. It sucks that drawer, that shelf, up into the lid and then reveals the larger storage cutout down below. And you'll see you also have a 12 volt power port right here. It's actually pretty dark down there, so let me turn on a light. Let's see, there's quite a bit of depth down there. Let me grab a pretty large water bottle just to give you an idea. I mean, you can easily, easily close the lid on this thing with a large water bottle inside. On the passenger side, we have a glove box. Inside is an owner's manual. I mean, I don't know about you, but I don't keep a lot of stuff in my glove box. All I really carry around is a first aid kit, so let's see if that will fit. Yeah, looks like it closes pretty easily. And then last thing, down kind of by your passenger's knees, there's also an additional power port down here. So I jumped in the back seat, I pushed the driver's seat back all the way, and I still have a good five, eh, maybe more like four inches between my knees and the back of that seat. So there's actually quite a big leg room back here. And I'm six feet tall, I have rather long legs, and even with that, I'm comfortable back here. On the back of the seats, you do have some small pockets. This is made out of a pretty nice quality leather material. It has a little bit of give to it, so you should be able to get some items back here. And you have that same pocket on the passenger side as well. On the center armrest for the front seat passengers, you have two dedicated vents, heated seat controls, which is just fantastic, a small cutout down here, and then two power ports at the bottom. One you'll need an adapter for, the other you will not because it's a three-pronged power port. Not much on the doors. Handle, window control, door latch. You get that same LED up here to tell you whether or not the doors are locked. Up top, you also get a handle, a small hook to hang a jacket, and then a light that's kind of buried underneath the handle itself. And you get that same setup also on the passenger side as well. So a handle, a hook, and then a light. And then there's a center armrest. If I can grab it, it folds down to reveal two cup holders. And then let's look at car seat anchors. You know, they're pretty shallow. You can see the car seat anchor itself right there without even manipulating the seats. So that tells me that installing a car seat back here should be pretty easy. All right, so let's close things out by taking a look at the hatch. You'll see that this is a nice big square shape, actually maybe more like a rectangle, which is great because it means it's really easy to get suitcases, golf clubs, whatever you need back here without any trouble. Also, if you lift up the floor of this area, you will find not only a spare tire, but you also get a lot of modular storage areas under here, which I think is great to save those items that you typically carry around but don't need access to all the time, especially when you're driving in the winter. I like to keep some sand in my car, maybe some kitty litter, stuff like that, just in case I get stuck. It's nice to see that you actually have a space for that on this vehicle. Now, the rear seats of this vehicle also fold down, and you can do it in two ways. The first, you can just pull on this little handle right here, and the seats will collapse forward without any effort, and that will reveal a much bigger storage space back here. And you also have electronic controls back on the left side of the vehicle, the driver's side of the vehicle in the hatch. You just push this button right here ever so slightly, and the seats kind of collapse rather violently and quick. And then you press the same control on the bottom, and that other seat will fold down. And then you'll see you just have a massive, massive storage area back here to haul some larger items if you need to. Anyway, so storage on this vehicle is just great. And, uh, well, that's pretty much everything end-to-end -end on the 2019 Ford Edge Titanium, at least the things that I found important. Uh, I really enjoy driving this one, and I continue to be impressed with how well Ford incorporates technology into their vehicles. It's seamless. You know, I never felt like I had to search for a control or a function on this car. I reached for something and it was kind of where I expected it to be, which is not always true on all these vehicles. So with that being said, uh, I'm obviously going to give this one five stars. Look, there's a couple of things that I might want to tweak to make this perfect for me, but overall I really can't think of any major changes that need to happen on the edge. I was very, very happy with this car. Well, I should say SUV. Anyway, that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you join me next time when I rent and review my 129th rental car. I'll see you then.